friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where I read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Judges chapter 19, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Judges chapter 19. Now in those days Israel had no king. There was a man from the tribe of Levi living in a remote area of the hill country of Ephraim. One day he brought home a woman from Bethlehem in Judah to be his concubine, but she became angry with him and returned to her father's home in Bethlehem. After about four months her husband set out for Bethlehem to speak personally to her and persuade her to come back. He took with him a servant and a pair of donkeys. When he arrived at her father's house, her father saw him and welcomed him. Her father urged him to stay a while, so he stayed three days, eating, drinking, and sleeping there. On the fourth day, the man was up early, ready to leave, but the woman's father said to his son-in-law, Have something to eat before you go. So the two men sat down together and had something to eat and drink. Then the woman's father said, Please stay another night and enjoy yourself. The man got up to leave, but his father-in-law kept urging him to stay, so he finally gave in and stayed the night. On the morning of the fifth day, he was up early again, ready to leave, and again the woman's father said, Have something to eat, then you can leave later this afternoon. So they had another day of feasting. Later, as the man and his concubine and servant were preparing to leave, his father-in-law said, Look, it's almost evening. Stay the night and, and enjoy yourself. Tomorrow you can get up early and be on your way. But this time the man was determined to leave. So he took his two saddled donkeys and his concubine and headed in the direction of Jabus, that is, Jerusalem. It was late in the day when they neared Jabus, and the man's servant said to him, Let's stop at this Jebusite town and spend the night there. No, his master said, we can't stay in this foreign town where there, is, there are no Israelites. Instead, we will go to Gilba, Gilbe. Come on, let's try to get as far as Gilbe or Rama, and we'll spend the night in one of those towns. So they went on. The sun was setting as they came to Gilbe, a town in the land of Benjamin. So they stopped there to spend the night. They rested in the town square, but no one took them in for the night. That evening, an old man came home from his work in the fields. He was from the hill country of Ephraim, but he was living in Gilbe, where the people were from the tribe of Benjamin. When he saw the travelers sitting in the town square, he asked them where they were from and where they were going. We have been in Bethlehem and Judah, the man replied. We are on our way to a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim, which is my home. I traveled to Bethlehem, and now I'm returning home. But no one has taken us in for the night, even though we have everything we need. We have straw and feed for our donkeys and plenty of bread and wine for ourselves. You are welcome to stay with me, the old man said. I will give you anything you, you might need, but whatever you do, don't spend the night in the square. So he took them home, he took them home with him and fed the donkeys. After they washed their feet, they ate and drank together. While they were enjoying themselves, a crowd of troublemakers from the town surrounded the house. They began beating at the door and shouting to the old man, Bring out the man who is staying with you so we can have sex with him. The old man stepped outside to talk to them. No, my brothers, don't do such an evil thing, for this man is a guest in my house, and such a thing would be shameful. Here, take my virgin daughter and, his man, and this man's concubine. I will bring them out to you, and you can abuse them and do whatever you like, but don't do such a shameful thing to this man. But they wouldn't listen to him, so the Levite took hold of his concubine and pushed her out the door. The men of the town abused her all night, taking turns raping her until morning. Finally, at dawn, they let her go. At daybreak, the woman returned to the house where her husband was staying. She collapsed at the door of the house and lay there until, until it was light. When her husband opened the door to leave, there, 
There lay his concubine with her hands on the threshold. He said, Get up, let's go, but there was no answer. So he put her body on the donkey and took her home. When he got home, he took a knife and he cut his concubine's body into twelve pieces. Then he sent one piece to each tribe throughout all the territory of Israel. Everyone who saw it said, Such a horrible crime has not been committed in all the time since Israel left Egypt. Think about it. What are we going to do? Who's going to speak up? Amen. So what did you think of Judges chapter 19? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so Judges 19. Oh gosh, I just don't like this chapter at all. <laughs> but, you know, it's in here, so... It's about the Levite and his concubine. So it starts off by just reminding us that um, now in those days of Israel, Israel had no king. So just a reminder to us that Israel is lost and they are headed in the wrong direction. And um, they, they don't have a relationship with God right now. They have no one to lead them. And it kind of feels like this is where our world is now. And um, as you read through this chapter, this story will sound very familiar because it was the same thing that happened in Genesis 19 um, when Lot was in Sodom. And it's a reminder to us that Israel is as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah during this time. And it's kind of similar when you think about it in the world today. Our world today is like Sodom and Gomorrah, a modern day Babylon, so to speak. You always hear people saying that it's because most people do not have God. They have, we have no king. We have no one to lead us. Um, we, those of us who are followers of Jesus have Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He is our king. But most of the people in the world don't know Jesus. And that's why it is so bad out there. Um, so this man, um, his wife left him um, and went back to live with her father because she was angry with him. And he ended up going to her to try to persuade her to come back and when he got there her father welcomed him with open arms he stayed for about four days and he was like okay we gotta go but his father kept her father kept trying to persuade them to stay longer and stay longer and stay longer and you have no in, there's no indication whether this was like the enemy trying to delay them or whether it was um you know god trying to protect them from what they were getting ready to walk into you just have no way of knowing which one this is. But one thing is for certain was that he said, let's stop at this Jebusite town and spend the night there. So he had an inkling to stop somewhere. And um, his servant said, no, um, or his master said, the servant said to him, let's stop in this Jebusite town. And his master, who was the husband, said, no, we can't stay in a foreign town where there's no Israelites. So he automatically assumed that if he goes to a town of Israelites, that there would be hospitality and there would be safety there. And that's what you expect. Among people of God, you expect hospitality. You expect to be safe, you know, when you're surrounded by people of God. But that's not always the case. And that's why we always have to stay alert because there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. There's a lot of people out there that claim that they know God. They're, they claim that they're God's people. The Israelites were God's chosen people, but yet he was not safe in their town and he saw no hospitality in their town. And that happens with the, amongst the community of people who claim to be God's children. So we always have to be alert and be aware of, of what we're walking into. So they stopped at this town that they thought they would be safe in because it was filled with Israelites. But instead, um, when they got to the town square, no one took them in, in, in for the night. No one offered them any hospitality. Finally, this one man came upon them and um, he said, you're welcome to stay with me. Um, he said, but whatever you do, don't spend the night in the town square. So obviously this man knew how bad his town was. And while they were enjoying themselves, people came to the door and asked the man to come out. You know, that's where you get the homosexual homosexuality comes into play. That's how you know the enemy's at work. Um, and he says, bring out the man who's staying with you so we can have sex with him. But, and then this is where it gets really, really bad because it's like, what happened to chival chivalry? They must not have had that in Israel um, where, you know, 
I mean, I, I understand that back then women were treated a lot like property, but, and you know, it's just so wrong. Women should be protected and cared for and taken and taken care of. There is no reason why he should have been like, no, it's shameful. Don't have sex with this man. Let me, here's my virgin daughter and, and his concubine have sex with them. And that was just so wrong. And it just, it breaks my heart to see that. But again, they have no king. They don't know Jesus. They don't know God. So um, he threw the concubine out the door. And instead, they should have fought the people off. They should have called on God to protect them. You know, these, this, these are things that happen when you know God. When you know God, you know that you're supposed to protect the women in your life. You know that you're supposed to fight for what is right and stand up for justice. You're not just supposed to give in to sin. So then... Um, once the, so after the night was over they had their way with her she died on the front porch of the house the man um came out saw what happened and he ended up cutting up her body and sending a piece of her body to each of the 12 tribes to let them know how bad it, it has gotten in israel like it has gotten so bad in israel that this has happened and this is what they said they said that a horrible crime has not been committed in all the time since we left Israel. Think about it. What are we going to do? Who's going to speak up? So they're saying that things have gotten so bad. They are so lost. And that's when they cry out to God. That's when they're saying, who is going to lead us? Who is going to help us? Who is going to speak up against all these atrocities that are going on in the world? And that's where we come in too. It's like we see the world just, we see the modern day Babylon, so to speak, the Sodom and Gomorrah, all the immoral behavior that is going on in this world. And we have to be the ones to speak up. We have to be the ones to stand up for it. We have to be the ones to say that we're not just going to turn a blind eye and throw our virgin daughters out into the world. We're going to protect our people. We're going to protect God's people and we're going to be a light leading people closer to Christ. So that's my interpretation of Judges chapter 19. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed. Stay in God's presence. Have a great rest of your day. I love you.